Hey everyone, it's Lachlan here, and happy Chinese New Year. Now this video is my uh, second impressions video of the Audio-Technica ATH M70X. And I say second impressions because I had an earlier first impressions video which I had to retract because basically I realized that the M70X wasn't sealing properly around my glasses and my impressions of the sound were completely far off the mark. So hopefully second time's a charm. Um, and in this video, I'm going to be comparing this headphone against the Audio-Technica ATH M50X, which is just, you know, now the former flagship M-Series studio monitor, and also the cousin of both of these headphones, the Audio-Technica ATH MSR7, which is a bit more of a lifestyle portable around ear headphone. Now, I got this M70X from minidisc.com.au, for 369 Australian dollars and I've had about three or four days of listening time with them now so I've got a pretty good idea glasses notwithstanding of how they sound but let's start with some comments on the physical design so first of all I can say that the design of the M70X very much like the M50X seems quite durable uh, the metal capsules for the driver in particular I uh, feel really good in the hand. They have this kind of nice check, oh, sorry, nice texture to them. The baffle itself appears to be plastic, but the actual driver capsule appears to be metal. Um, everything feels pretty solid. I don't have any problems with the durability or the apparent durability of this headphone, as you would expect uh, from the M50X. However, there are some issues with the finishing of this headphone that I'm not especially keen on. And what I mean about finishing is just attention to detail in some of the uh, material assembly and some of the uh, plastics chosen in this headphone. So what I mean is, for instance, uh, with this headphone, and I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but some of the, uh, the, the metal finishing on the uh, headband parts on the yoke, and particularly the black plastic parts, they, they look a little, I would say, unfinished, a little rough and perhaps a little cheap for such an expensive headphone, especially on some of the plastic edges, particularly around the headband. For instance, uh, this part here, again, I don't know if it shows up well on camera, but this edge is a little more roughly finished than I would have expected from a uh, you know, $300, $400 headphone. You can even see that on this headband here, just again, if it can show up on camera, there's a glue splotch right above my thumb uh, where the headband has been kind of uh, glued uh, to the cushion. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, it, it just seems like there's a little bit of sloppiness there that I'm not uh, entirely pleased to see. Uh, there's some other odd quirks about this headphone. Um, there's no markings on the headband adjustments, basically. Like you, there, There's no indication of how far you've adjusted the headband. You have to uh, balance it visually. And that's a, that's a really weird oversight for what is technically a, a professional product because both the M50X, which has these markings, uh, and the MSR7 has these markings. So I don't really understand what's going on there. Um, it's a really, really strange oversight. Uh, there's other things that are kind of strange about the design of this headphone, particularly this headband. I'm not too sure the reason why this headband has been constructed the way it has because it's a three-part assembly. Basically, you have these two translucent uh, plastic casing sides here and the headband cushion here. Now that I've played around with it a bit more, I suspect it's to enable the headband to kind of extend or bend a little more, but it just looks a little clumsy. It looks a little bit cheap to me compared to a fully enclosed uh, pleather headband like that on the MSR7 or the M50X. Again, these aren't deal breakers. There's nothing about the uh, actual physical durability of the headphone that concerns me. It's just the appearance of it, I guess, or the, or the material finishing for what is quite an expensive product. But uh, anyway, one other comment I should make is that these headphones, as you can see, they do fold flat, but they only fold flat one way. So if you are wearing them uh, on your neck, they won't fold the other way to uh, rest against, you know, rest with the uh, driver's side on your chest. It's actually, you can only fold them so that the driver's face outwards, which is uh, not something that I feel particularly secure doing. Anyway, there are a few 
positive things I can say about the design. Number one, the M70X is quite comfortable and I would say it's more comfortable than the MSR7 or the M50X. Uh, it's more comfortable than the MSR7 because it doesn't have that very strong clamping force that the MSR7 has uh, and I find that the ear pads themselves are more kind of comfortable, more kind of soft and supple than they are on the uh, M50X which has some pretty stiff ear pads. The other thing is that the actual headband itself, as strange as the assembly may seem to me, uh, I actually find it quite comfortable because the actual headband cushion makes a, a broader point of contact with the top of my skull, so I, there's a bit more of a even weight distribution there. Um, so overall, I find it just a more comfortable headphone. It even feels a little lighter on the head, even though it's about the same weight as the MSR7 or the M50X. Um, it's also a sealed headphone, there's no ports of any kind that I can see uh, and it has very good noise isolation and actually has better noise isolation than the M50X and I suspect that's due to the use of denser metals on the actual ear cup itself. Um, so, you know, more comfort, more isolation, those are welcome improvements over the M50X. Now let's talk about the sound um, and uh, I'll, I'll just make a note here, just hang on a moment. When I, when I test headphones, I usually wear this pair of glasses, uh, this pair of glasses here. Um, and I have two pairs of glasses and I wear this one for around ear headphones because I found that in the past on my other pair of headphones, uh, when the ear pad you know, sits around there, uh, it, it doesn't actually quite seal on my head uh, around the thick glasses arm. So I, I wear this pair and it's usually worked out quite well in the past with these pair of glasses. Uh, for some reason, with the M70X, these glasses still don't work, and I still don't get a proper seal with them. And, you know, I suppose you can blame me for wearing stupid, thick-armed uh, hipster glasses, I guess. But, um, it, it's, 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 it's the case with the M70X that if you lose even a little bit of a seal, basically all the base disappears. And so, in my first impressions video, when I was wearing this headphone with these glasses, I complained about the M70X being very thin and harsh uh, in those first impressions. Um, now, I don't know why the M70X is so sensitive to losing a seal. Uh, it seems a little more sensitive than other headphones that I've tried, even the M50X or the MSR7. Even if I lose a little bit of a seal, you still get a, a fair amount of bass, which is why they still work with those glasses. Not with the M70X. Basically, um, or the base disappears without a proper seal. So I don't know if it's an acoustic damping characteristic of the M70X, but it is something to note if you wear thicker glasses, I guess. I think you can get away with those titanium bendy glasses or if you wear contacts, that kind of thing. I've personally been doing testing with my eyes, sorry, with my, I was about to say with my eyes uh, taken off, but I mean with my glasses taken off. Um, yeah, I, so I don't think this will happen with all glasses. But um, that is something to note. So if you're going to demo it yourself, I would recommend you take off your pair of glasses just to see if you get any issues with the seal. So obviously my impressions are going to be dramatically different from the, the first impression because not only does the amount of bass change with the seal, that means that the, um, the relative proportion of bass and treble changes and the listening volume that I would use to listen to it changes, blah, 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 blah. So just disregard everything I said in the first impression video, if you saw it, uh, if you were one of the 1,500 people who saw it, rather. Um, let's talk about the actual sound this time without my glasses on. Now, I think the most useful way to talk about the sound of the M70X is to compare it with the sound of the other two Audio-Technica headphones in the lineup that are very similar to it. So again, we'll talk about what the M50X sounds like first, just to remind ourselves. The M50X is a studio monitor, but it, strangely enough for a studio monitor, doesn't sound very neutral. It has a really big bass line. Um, it's, it's quite a solid, big sound, but some would say that the bass sounds boomy and dominant on the M50X. And at the same time on the M50X, it has a treble response with a particular peak in the high frequencies that make sound, make, sorry, make things sound sort of shimmery, um, sort of metallic. So it's a very aggressive, in-your-face sort of tone, and a lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. It's basically a headphone that just throws everything into your face at the same time. I quite like it. 
I think it's a solid and a detailed sound and it's a really good uh, all-round option for someone who's after their first pair of nicer headphones. But I understand people who say it sounds congested or compressed and um, I understand why it's a bit controversial and a lot of times it's over-recommended, I would say, to a lot of people. Um, but I still think it's a good headphone. Now, the MSR7 is the other new Audio-Technica headphone. This is more of a lifestyle kind of portable headphone. It's more of a sort of fancy, uh, luxury, around-ear portable headphone. As you can see from the design, it's a little more snazzy. This headphone is like if you took the uh, M50X and you tamed and flattened the base and you removed the treble shimmer. So with the MSR7, you also have the vocals at the same time being brought up in the mix, particularly um, female bo vocals, but both male and female vocals are more forward in the mix on this headphone. So uh, I think the MSR7 is a really nicely balanced, nicely tuned headphone. It sounds very musical, has a really nice voicing. It It's a good all-rounder that particularly brings out the vocals. But the, the one criticism I can make of the MSR7, besides um, some comfort issues I have with the MSR7 because the headband doesn't play nicely with my head, um, it, the one issue that I can really say is that uh, this headphone can sound a little too forward uh, when you're listening in noisier environments, so particularly on trains or planes when you have to turn up the volume uh, to hear everything a bit better, you'll find that the vocals can get a bit too forward. Uh, some people complain about sibilance as well, just that the S notes being kind of emphasized. So that suggests there's a peak on this headphone of around 8 kilohertz. Again, that might be a problem at higher volumes. Even then, I think the MSR7 is a headphone that can do double duties as a studio monitor because it is still very clean and detailed and it's a, it's a good sounding headphone. Now, I expected the M70X to sound like uh, the MSR7 really when I, when I uh, bought it, but Actually, it sounds more like a, a mixture uh, between the M50X and the MSR7, and it also has its own sort of characteristics. So, without my glasses on, I can report that the M70X is a bit of a V-shaped sounding headphone. So, it puts more emphasis on the two extremes of the frequency response, uh, uh, particularly in terms of the low frequency bass and the high frequency treble. Uh, but it's more of a balanced sound, it's more of a broad V kind of overall. It's a bit more gentle than say the M50X, which has a habit of sounding just kind of a bit uneven, you know, kind of bloated in the bass, kind of uh, shimmery to kind of tinny in the treble. This is more of a of an even kind of balanced sound to it. I actually think that it sounds like a more extreme version of the V-Sonic GR07, if you've tried those in-ear earphones, or the AKG K612, uh, which is a around-ear open headphone. The M70X has more treble energy than both of those uh, earphones and headphones that I just mentioned. It has more treble energy, but it is uh, similar in terms of how it's it's slightly more dry, it has more emphasis on the bass, it has more emphasis on the treble. Though, again, yes, this is more extreme than those two headphones. And that's a, that's a, that's probably a, something that's going to get a lot of people really interested immediately because the K612 and the, uh, the GR07 are very popular in their respective categories. Um, and it's also going to turn a lot of people off because a lot of people do have problems with the treble on the GR07, especially the original Mark I version. Uh, and I, you know, even personally find that the mids on the uh, K612 can be just a little bit um, etched sounding at times, a little too forward. Um, now, going between this, the 70X, and something like the Bayer Dynamic T51P or the Sennheiser Amperia, uh, going between those and something like the M70X is like getting the oral equivalent of a whiplash because those headphones are much more rich and warm in the mid-bass kind of tones. The M70X is overall a lot brighter with a lot less of a kind of uh, filled-in uh, mid-bass tone. So overall, this makes the M70X a really solid, a really fast and detailed sounding headphone. It's got excellent detail retrieval and separation. It sounds really, really detailed. And um, I, I, as an experiment, just for fun, I tried doing the Golden Ears, um, sorry, the Philips 
Golden Ears uh, test on their website to see how far I could get with the M70X because it has, again, good up noise isolation and the detailed sound. And I managed to get up to the Silver Ears level. I'm actually pretty confident that I could get to the Golden Ears level um, with enough training because I would basically, you know, I was just failing on the uh, sort of frequency range test of particularly identifying particularly which uh, frequencies are, are kind of subdued or, or enhanced. Um, but it is a very, very uh, detailed sounding headphone. Now it's definitely a uh, a headphone, it, it's not as unnatural or uneven as the M50X, but it is still very in your face. Uh, it still conveys a lot of energy at once. Now, let me kind of break that down. So firstly, in terms of treble, it's definitely a brighter sounding headphone than the M50X. Uh, it's, it's brighter sounding, but the peak in the treble and in the high frequency treble, we're talking about uh, cymbals and, and hi-hats and those kind of shimmery kind of instruments. The peak on the M70X is a bit more broad than on the M50X. So rather than having a sort of metallic tinny kind of note, it, it's, it's a bit more of an overall emphasis. Uh, it's, it's a kind of high frequency sound that makes things sound more detailed and more spacious and more open. So the sound stage on the M70X actually sounds almost like an open headphone, similar in the way that the AKG K550 sounds a bit like an open headphone. But it is a lot of treble energy. Again, it's more than the M50X. So if you are sensitive to forward cymbal hits and those kind of instruments, the M70X will be too extreme, uh, particularly if you listen to a lot of electronic music, electronic dance music, hip hop, that kind of thing. It's definitely a less of a comfortable headphone with those genres of music. So if you didn't like the trouble on the M50X, you won't like the trouble on the M70X, I suspect. Now, it doesn't actually seem to have as a sibilant peak as the MSR7 does, around eight kilohertz. So the S notes, which are a little lower than the cymbal hits and that kind of thing, they're, they're a little less emphasized on the M70X, so it's a little more smooth that way. And if you're sensitive to sibilance, uh, uh, this might be a little bit of a better choice than the MSR7. Now, the mids on the M70X are not as forward as they are on the MSR7. And I would actually say that they take a back seat relatively in the whole signature. Again, they're not recessed, but they are just a little more subdued compared to the the, the bass and mid-bass and the treble on this headphone. Uh, vocals, and particularly male vocals, aren't very emphasized on the M70X, uh, which I think is probably, uh, you know, it, it depends again on your preferences. The, the MSR7 is the more musical sounding of the two headphones. Now, when we're talking about the bass, the bass is kind of interesting. Now, again, without my glasses, the bass sounds very, very tight uh, on this headphone. It's actually somewhat warmer uh, than I initially thought it was. I mean, obviously, uh, because I wasn't getting it sealed before, but it's, it's actually somewhat warm and rich to my ears. Uh, I would say particularly around the mid bass. Now that's not to say it sounds bloated or boomy, because it, it definitely doesn't sound anything like the M50X in terms of bass. There's overall less bass than there is on the M50X, but it's it's more, it, it's a fuller bass tone than I originally thought. Now, um, it's, it's definitely punchy bass. It's really tight. It's not going to be for bass heads. It's not going to be for people who are after even a you know, I would say, uh, uh, I would, I would point you towards the M50X if you, if bass was kind of an important thing to you, but that's not to say that there isn't much bass on the M70X because there is, it goes down quite deep. It's very tight. Um, it's quite nice. I would say for a lot of people, this is going to be the right amount of bass. In the end though, it's still going to be a headphone for those people who are after a bright detailed sound rather than someone who is after the, uh, sort of, uh, a bassy kind of headphone. Now, I also think that the M70X would be a decent all round for lots of genres of music, provided that you want more of a forward, more of a bright, exciting kind of tone to your music. So even though a lot of genres like electronic or hip hop are risky with this headphone, they still sound really exciting and fun. I would say, and you get a lot of detail, a lot of spatial separation, a lot of layering. 
Um, and if you listen to acoustic music on the M70X, again, it sounds really detailed and insightful, but it's not laid back, it's not lush or mellow, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna, you know, tug at your heartstrings uh, if you are into that kind of mellow sound. I personally prefer warmer sounding headphones, but I have to say, listening to the M70X again with my glasses off, it sounds pretty amazing. So, yeah, at the same time, even though I think this is a decent all-rounder in terms of the sort of, uh, I guess, sort of the overall sound signature, I would hesitate about using these headphones in a noisy environment because even though noisy, uh, the noise isolation on this headphone is quite good, there's still a lot of treble energy in these headphones and um, unless you're careful of your volume control, if you turn this up too far, I think you could still really put your ears under a lot of stress because of the forward treble energy on this headphone. And again, I still think something like the Bay Dynamic T51P is a bit safer to be using on public transport or that kind of thing because the treble is a bit more rolled off. So, do I like the M70X? And I have to say, after the initial hiccup I had with the glasses, I do quite like the M70X at this point. It's not it's not like a super upgraded version of the M50X if that's what you were after, but it's a bright, uh, detailed, fast and spacious sounding headphone that has good extension on both ends. And it's definitely one of the better closed portable around ear headphones that I've heard. So I think audio Technic is gonna actually do quite well with this uh, release. Now, if you like more mids, you might prefer the MSR7 over the M70X. If you like more bass, you might prefer the M50X over the M70X uh, as a studio monitor, I think this does very well in terms of delivering a lot of detail and a relatively balanced, um, consistent sort of frequency response. And it isolates and it's more comfortable than those two headphones. So at this point, I am quite liking this headphone. Um, I'm happy to declare that the M70X is something that's worth looking into, especially if you prefer a brighter sound, but I Still recommend you should demo it before you buy it, just to be sure that the treble isn't going to be too much for you. Um, and also, I would demo it just to make sure that it plays nice with your glasses of choice if you do wear glasses. So yeah, it's funny how much of a difference uh, just, a, just a pair of glasses will make, and I'm definitely going to be shopping around for another pair with maybe a bit more flexible arms. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about the sound of this headphone and how it compares to some of the other headphones in my collection, feel free to pop uh, your question in the comments, I'd be happy to answer them. You can also talk to me on Facebook at facebook.com slash likes a thing or on Twitter at locks likes a thing. Thanks again to all my regular subscribers. Sorry about the mix up earlier with the uh, first impressions video and happy listening.